there we go. So thank you everyone for being here, all right on time. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about uh, the Godot game engine and uh, Python and why the two can uh, really get along nicely. Uh, my name is Emmanuel, by the way. Uh, I'm French, maybe you heard my accent. So uh, what is Godot? Uh, I guess most of you know about Godot. Maybe uh, people who don't know. Okay, so I can skip this slide. Uh, yeah, really fast. Uh, Godot is an incredible game engine, fully open source, which uh, ships to uh, plenty of platforms, mobile, web, etc. There is a 2D, uh, 3D graphic, uh, um, um, sorry, uh, physical engine. Uh, you can export, you can do plenty of things. Basically, it's uh, the best game engine uh, ever, except uh, one or two like, uh, you know, Unity and uh, Unreal and all the others. But whatever. So what can we do with Godot? Uh, sorry. There is. So, if you if you're not familiar with Godot, uh, you can see the the game engine is built around the uh, scenes. So here we have uh, the 2D platformer demo for Godot. Uh, I wanted originally to show the 3D one, but basically this computer is a potato, so it won't run. Uh, so you can see there is um, here in small. Uh, what we call the graph scene. So basically our scene is made of plenty of nodes. Uh, for instance, uh, the player is a node, the, the enemy are node, the platform are node, everything is node. So you can uh, from, here, uh, from here edit all your thing. You can uh, look from here. Yeah, the, the resolution is really small so you can see anything but just trust me. You can uh, edit plenty of thing from your, your game engine. And then uh, when you're ready, you can just press one, uh, one uh, key, and then you can start playing. You can start tweaking. You can uh, send uh, like uh, this thing uh, on your mobile phone to debug uh, remotely, etc. So there's plenty of things you can do. Uh, one really cool feature about Godot is the, the node I was talking to you about. Uh, sorry, I can't find my cursor. Here it is. Uh, the nodes, they are themselves scenes. So you have scenes nested inside scenes. So it's really cool because it means you can just, if I click here, here it is, you have the scene of my, uh, my enemy, for instance, which is here, nice little guy. Uh, okay, so you cannot see, but it has its own um, scene tree, and so you have plenty of uh, component, like, uh, for example, this guy has uh, animation, it has um, a sound emitter in order to do a spatial, spatialized sound, uh, you have the uh, physical hitbox, box, etc. So you have all those things um, really put nicely together uh, inside Godot. And each of those uh, nodes, you can uh, plug them a script. So try to click, it's getting harder. Okay, so you still can't see a thing, and I cannot zoom, so sorry, you have to trust me. Uh, basically, these things. It kind of looks from where you are, it kind of looks like uh, Python. It's not Python, it's a, a <laughs> language called, a script language called GDScript. It is loosely, uh, loosely based on Python. And um, from now on, you maybe uh, wonder yeah, why, why this language? Why didn't they, they just took uh, one existing language like uh, Python or Lua and just uh, ship uh, with the game engine? It would have been uh, much better. Oh, according to uh, the bug tracker of Godot, there's plenty of people who think uh, it would have been uh, the best idea ever, and uh, yeah, spoiler alert, it's not the case. Uh, so yeah, okay, so the game engine is great, but uh, we're here for Python, right? So, uh, but before Python, just um, we should just have a look at why GDScript is in fact a great idea. Uh, and so to do that, we have to just have a look at how works the nodes I was talking to you about. So uh, Godot is the C++ game engine. Uh, so every node is uh, implemented just like a regular C++ class. But you have a bit of additional stuff, which are uh, those things. 
And uh, so basically, what you are uh, what you are doing by uh, doing these things is you are adding a runtime introspection to your class. Uh, so what does it mean? Is uh, you can use your class like this. So this is uh, the C++ traditional uh, boring way. Yeah, just like you use your new keyword, you create a, an instance of your class, and then you just use it. And you can use the fancy dynamic way. So it looks like much more complicated. It is. It is much slower. But it's cool, because uh, right now you can see there is plenty of uh, variant thing, and there is this class DB structure. Uh, class DB is the <coughs> component which remember, which register every uh, every one of your script, uh, sorry, not your script, your node, and all its method, all its property, etc. So at runtime you can ask, hey, class DB, give me uh, the the way, uh, give me a new instance of this uh, <coughs> this node. Give me uh, the, um, the, the the method for this uh, this node, and then you can call things. And uh, you can see uh, you use variant everywhere. So when you call uh, a function, you give parameter as variant. You uh, you you get back a variant and etc. Uh, it looks like a lot more a lot like uh, Python. In Python, when you create a function, there is no typing. It's dynamic typing. So you can uh, give the function an int, and uh, tomorrow you will give it uh, a string, and it will work. Or maybe it will blow up. But blowing up in Python means uh, you get a nice error. Blowing up in C++ means uh, anything. People might get killed. Uh, so that's why variant is uh, much better, because uh, it means that you can take this thing and basically you can write it like this, and this is GD script. And so now uh, th this is very uh, the same, but it means uh, now you have you can have end user which write easy GD script, and this code uh, it won't crash. If there is a problem, you will see uh, a nice error and etc. Uh, so put it another way, we can see Godot in two parts. There is the big, the big main part, which is the core, which contains this variant structure, which is a, a combination of all the built-in type, all the Godot nodes that could be, and etc. And you have this, uh, this nice uh, class DB uh, system, which uh, allows you to, uh, to at runtime uh, query um, your, your node uh, method and property. And on the other side, you have this really small module. Uh, in the code base, it's something really small, and it's, it's not even in the core of the engine. And it's basically two things. One is the compiler, and another is the interpreter. So basically, you just compile your uh, user-readable uh, GD script into bytecode, and then you uh, just interpret one bytecode at a time. And uh, basically, you're doing uh, this one bytecode at a time. So, uh, that's why GDScript is a great idea because it is really tightly integrated into Godot. And uh, so, yeah, it basically saying we should have removed uh, GDScript and used uh, Lua instead, it means we have to fight against all these things. Uh, but basically, that's what I'm doing in Python. Uh, so it's, it's painful, but I really love Python because it has a huge ecosystem. <laughs> and uh, for, for instance, if you're like me, and every time you play a game, you say, oh, the, the AI of the, this game is really poor, uh, maybe one day some guy will use this binding to, uh, use, uh, uh, to use machine learning to create a really great AI. Uh, I hope so. And so that's basically one use case you can use by bringing Python to Godot. Basically, you give a, a really huge ecosystem, nice uh, language, and uh, plenty of possibilities. Now, how to do that? Um, the, this is a basic, um, like every uh, Godot game looks like this. So on the left side, you have your Godot binary. So it's basically what you will download from the Godot website. And on the right side, you, are, you have all your assets. So uh, you're like uh, your sprite, uh, so your script, etc. And what we are going to do is this. So basically, we just uh, drop the, the GD script, you replace it by Python. And then you have this shared library, which will contain the Python interpreter. So it, it can talk to, it can interpret your Python script. And now it has to talk to uh, the main Godot binary. So to do that, there is uh, this uh, C API, which is called GD Native, which uh, allows you to access basically everything from Godot. Uh, how this, how this uh, GD Native works? Um, basically, just like what I so what I show you with the variant stuff, 
it looks pretty much the same, except, uh, well, you're from outside of uh, Godot. You're just like in shared library, and you, you can do that. And it's much faster than the variant stuff for reasons we don't have to talk about. And so it's much more dangerous. Uh, anyway, so what we have to do to, uh, <coughs> to give to Godot the Python, um, the Python language is um, there is a function inside the GD80, which allow you to register a new script langu language inside the, the game engine. So uh, once you've done that, um, <coughs> Godot will know that uh, every time he has to load a .pi file, he has to call your library, and so you can do the, the work. Uh, and on top of that, there is another thing you have to do, is uh, provide to the, uh, your Python world all the GD native uh, function, because now you want to access uh, all your nodes, modify your node, etc. Uh, now, for how to do that, uh, first we use uh, Cython. Uh, in truth, uh, I've used basically every possible tool you can use to plug uh, Python and C together. Uh, so if you have questions about this after that, you can talk to me. I guess uh, uh, I can say a lot about that. But anyway, the best is Cython. Just kidding. There is also CFFI, which is uh, really great. But for your or use case, Cython is really cool. Uh, if you don't know, uh, Cython basically is uh, a tool that allows you to compile Python into a shared library, which will be seen from Python just like a regular module. So this is this gives you like a 50% bo boost. But the really really great thing is uh, you can inside Cython uh, mix together C and Python in a really elegant way. So in the end, it means you can go as fast as C, and you can integrate really, really nicely with external third-party uh, C library, just like what we need for Godot. So it just worked great. The, the little complicated thing is basically uh, we have plenty of templates everywhere to generate this code. So for instance, we have our Godot binary. So once again, we use ClassDB to generate uh, a JSON which will show us all the class, all the method, all the property, etc. And so then we can generate this file, which is basically a Cython version, which allows you to access every class, uh, method, etc. So it's pretty big, so 6.3 uh, uh, megabytes. But after that, you have to compile this. And uh, Cython, it, the, the Cython comp compiler starts by compiling your, uh, your Cython code into C. And so now it's 87 megabytes. And on top of that, you're 60 seconds older. But it's only the beginning. And uh, so compiling is 200 seconds. And it's also 6 gigabytes of RAM on GCC. So this computer cannot do that. So uh, Travis cannot do that also. So you have to use Clang, which uh, eat less RAM. But GCC is great. Also great. Uh, anyway, so that's what you end up with. And uh, there is other template I won't talk to, to you about. But you have templates everywhere. And you end up with a, a nice thing um, that can use Python. Uh, you can use Python <coughs> from Godot. Uh, from this, the basically, I'm the, I've been doing this for like uh, since 2016. Uh, we are still in beta. This is a bit sad for me because uh, I gave a, a talk about this like in uh, 2017 for EuroPython, and uh, the first bullet point was exactly the same. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, shame. But no, because this is not the same beta. Uh, it's much better beta. Like uh, before, it was leaking RAM. Now it's no longer. Uh, the performance is better. Uh, I'm pretty confident we can release something uh, nice in a short time. So I'll promise uh, we will have uh, a stable version uh, before Star Citizen, for instance. I hope. And uh, after that, uh, if someone here knows about macOS, uh, I'm not a macOS developer, and uh, there is uh, trouble with the build right now. So anyway, I ask. Um, and yeah, one really important point, I think, is uh, the possibility, given all my uh, system is, writing, is written in Cython, it means uh, we 
can provide all the, um, the Godot API in Cyton 2, and we can make a user use Cyton. So what does it mean? Is like, uh, first you just write your, your game in Python, like you're really fast, you can debug your stuff, etc. And then when you need performance, you can slowly write the hot pass in Cyton to get performance. So it's like the best of, the, of all the world. So I'm really excited about it. And on top of that, uh, maybe you've seen that uh, the Godot 3.2 has been released. Um, so now there is the 4.0. And there is plenty of uh, compatibility breakage which are ongoing. Uh, for instance, I was uh, working on this uh, tonight, and that's why I'm late. Uh, so there is plenty of light stuff are coming along, performance boost and so on. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, and yeah. You don't have to forget that it's a game engine, so I should be writing games, but <laughs> yeah, damn it. Uh, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> so, question everyone? <coughs> no? Okay, so maybe... Uh, Maybe they already told you, but I will tell you again. Uh, like Monday and Tuesday, there is a Godocon. And uh, so if you're interested in Godot, uh, you should really go and come and uh, have fun with us. Uh, it's nice. People are nice. And I'll be there. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so the question is, what kind of help do I need? Uh, uh, first, I need friend. Because, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny, but it's like when you're working alone on this kind of project and it's plenty of complexity, so there is a lot of people who come, who look at the code, and they say, oh, it's nice, I give a star. But they don't know how to, what to do, what to work. So basically, they just disappear. And when you're developing this kind of thing, you just feel lonely, and you have to work for months and months, and you're like, oh, why am I doing this anymore? So just people uh, coming and s just uh, adding an issue and saying, oh, I found something, it's nice. So this is the first thing. Uh, and for instance, if you want to make me happy, you should go to Godokan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on top of that, um, I think there is, so as I said, uh, all the, um, the platform things, because uh, there is a Linux, there is Windows, there is Mac OS. Uh, if you look at into the code base, there is plenty of sarcastic comments about Windows and how complicated it is for basically nothing. Uh, so if you want to make me feel happy, uh, just don't let me write sarcastic comments about how Mac OS is complicated and so on. Uh, on top of that, there is, for instance, packaging. Packaging is like 90% uh, of the work once you have done 90% of the other work. So this is another stuff which is uh, not that complicated, but plenty of small things which to add up. Uh, on top of that, I think the code base right now it's about stable, which was not the case like two months ago. So people can come, just have a look, asking questions, and uh, yeah, we might figure out what we can do. Okay, thank, you. thank you for the question. <laughs>